the Romans. They were construction and civil engineering experts, and the technological and cultural advancements that resulted from their flourishing civilization were unmatched. They were superior in technologies that were much ahead of their time. This explains how few things Romans created have lasted to this day. Here are some of the advanced Roman technologies that will blow your mind. Roman Mining The Romans were the first people to employ sophisticated technology in mining. It was common practice for the Romans to construct several aqueducts around mining locations. These aqueducts sometimes included enormous tanks and water-powered machinery such as stamp mills and trip hammers. Hushing is the name of the mining technique that used large tanks. The process of hushing involved releasing massive amounts of water to wash away the ground and reveal the precious mineral rocks beneath it. In a different type of mining technique, known as fire quenching, water was drained from these tanks and poured into fractures in rocks that had been heated. Before the recovered or could be further processed, it had to be broken up into smaller pieces using stamp mills and trip hammers, both of which were driven by water. There are still remnants of the Roman mining technology at locations, such as Las Medulas in Spain and Dalakothi in Great Britain. These sites are located in Spain and Great Britain respectively. There were no less than five extensive aqueducts at the Dalakothi site. Roman Concrete the Romans are credited for inventing concrete, which is widely considered one of their most significant contributions to the field of construction technology. Concrete had a considerable impact on the development of bridges and harbors, in addition to enabling the construction of magnificent structures such as the Pantheon. When Roman builders combined volcanic dust, known as pozzolana, to mortar comprised of brick or rock pieces, lime or gypsum and water in the late 3rd century BCE, they created what is known as Roman concrete, also known as a Puschimanticium. A chemical reaction was triggered by the presence of pozzolana, which contained both silica and alumina. As a result, the mortar's cohesiveness was significantly improved. During the period known as the Concrete Revolution in Rome, significant and rapid advancements were made in the construction material, known as concrete. For instance, Roman builders found that, Adding crushed terracotta to the mortar, produced a firm hydraulic mixture that could be used as a waterproof material for cisterns, or other constructions exposed to the weather. This discovery led to the widespread use of terracotta in Roman construction. The Romans had also mastered underwater concrete by the middle of the 1st century CE, which made it possible for them to construct harbors like the one found in Caesarea. To create underwater concrete, Lime and volcanic ash were combined in a ratio of one part lime to two parts ash. Then the resulting mixture was placed in volcanic tuff or small wooden cases. After that, the combination would be hydrated by seawater, which would start the heat releasing and hardening chemical reaction in concrete. We could inquire whether Roman concrete was of higher quality than either modern concrete or Portland cement used today. Recent investigations conducted by scientists from the United States and Italy have demonstrated that Roman concrete was significantly superior. They found out that Roman concrete could stand the sea onslaught for over 2,000 years by examining Roman harbors in the Mediterranean. In contrast, Portland cement doesn't start to deteriorate until it's been exposed to salt water for 50 years. According to the findings of these researchers, Portland cement does not bind as well as Roman concrete. It begins to crack after only a few decades, because it does not contain the same lime and volcanic ash mixtures as Roman concrete. Mills and water devices Mills were available to the Romans for grinding grain into flour. They used these mills to produce flour. In most cases, these mills were equipped with a horizontal axle coupled to a shaft that went through a lower millstone and turned an upper millstone. A teetering mechanism was used to change the distance between the millstones in order to maintain precise control over the degree of fineness of the powder that was generated. The most primitive mills were powered by either humans or animals. For instance, the Mola Asinaria was a simple rotating mill that was used as early as 300 BCE. 
It was powered by slaves, horses, donkeys, or mules with their eyes covered. In the middle of the 3rd century BCE, the Romans invented the watermill, which could have the water wheel in either a horizontal or vertical orientation. The power of a river or the high-pressure water from a towering reservoir was harnessed by watermills. The force with which the water struck the wheels could frequently be altered, thanks to a network of tanks and pipes. Vertical water wheels were the most difficult to construct, since they were responsible for converting the vertical revolution of the water wheel into the horizontal rotation of the shaft that turned the top millstone. The aqueduct and mills at Barbigal were constructed at the end of the 1st century CE. The aqueduct had water running over a 19-meter downhill slope that powered 16 independent water wheels. The mill could process around 3 tons of grain in an hour. It was able to generate enough flour to feed up to 40,000 people every day, and employed hundreds of workers at its peak production. Other water-powered tools, such as sawing wood and stones and crushing metal ores, were available to the Romans. Sawmills were equipped with water wheels that drove stone-cutting saws, which were operated by means of a crank and a connecting axle. In mining locations, or was broken up with trip hammers consisting of water wheels, cams, and hammers. These hammers were used to smash the ore into smaller pieces. Greek Fire It was not the ancient Greeks who came up with the concept of Greek fire, rather the Byzantine Greeks in the 7th century CE did so. The concept originally came from the Middle East. It could have a deadly effect whether it was employed on land or in the water. Because it would ignite when it came into touch with water, it is uncertain what the specific components of Greek fire were, nonetheless, it is most likely that it contained naphtha and quicklime. The terrifying reality is that the sailors were unable to douse the flames with water, since it had no effect. Greek fire could be sprayed under pressure to shoot flames at opposing ships, and later it was used on lands, to attack fortresses or as a defensive weapon. This lethal but astounding feat of chemistry has been superseded in modern times by the substance known as napalm. Roads and Highways Although every culture had roads and highways, the Romans were the only ones who invented roads and highways that were significantly different from those of every other civilization. They had roads that were not just made of rocks and gravel, but also used a mixture of gravel, soil and bricks to construct those roadways. Before 200 AD, people began experimenting with creating sturdy roads, eventually leading to construction routes that were as long as 50,000 miles. Because the bricks came from igneous rock that had been heated and cooled, the road was far more durable than the roadways of earlier civilizations. The evidence can be found in the ancient roadways that were used in Rome. They not only came up with a powerful mixture to use in the construction of roads, but they also constructed banks on the sides of the roadways to stop rainwater from flowing onto the streets and destroying them. In addition, they had paved roadways throughout Europe and all the way around the Mediterranean basin. They also invented road markers and markings to indicate the distance traveled which was measured in miles. Air Conditioning In the winter, the homes that were built before the development of air conditioning lacked adequate amounts of warm air. The Romans then developed a method that would eventually lead to the recirculation of warm air throughout the house. This was accomplished by carving out hollow areas within the columns. The hollow gaps in the columns were maintained so that when air rose up through the space that was formed, it would heat the house. This was the reasoning behind maintaining the hollow spaces. Even though it was not like the air conditioning we have today, it was the most efficient way to regulate the temperature and keep oneself warm during the colder months. There are a few locations in the modern day that still make use of the air conditioning that the Romans invented. What do you think of the video? Let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it and hit that subscribe button before you go. Thanks for watching.